This is America, a nation of free people, a nation dedicated to the best interests of these people and to the safeguarding of their lives, liberties, and their pursuit of happiness. From the men and women who built this great nation, there has come to us the greatest heritage on earth, the rights of free men. This heritage is our dearest possession. We must maintain and protect it. country, our way of life is endangered. The totalitarian monsters who have crushed free nations in other parts of the world and enslaved their peoples now seek to destroy us in their mad scheme for world conquest. Their entire resources for generations to come have been melted down into a giant machine of destruction whose targets would be our cities and our homes. But when this happens, we will not be found unprepared. Post 8 reporting. Enemy aircraft detected. batteries like giant serpents strike forth with fire and steel. But there must be other means as well with which to strike the invaders from the sky. Their speed and mobility must be matched by fighter defenders that can go aloft to meet the enemy in his own field of combat. The firepower of ground guns must be brought to the skies with weapons that can strike at the demons of terror with all the deadly accuracy of a cobra. Cobras of the air with fangs of steel. A challenge to the most formidable enemy attacker. Swift and mighty as its namesake, they will unleash their fury at the forces of aggression. threat of enemy invasion becomes greater, our fighting forces continue to be marshaled in increasing numbers. There must be fighter planes, thousands upon thousands in their growing armadas, to rise up and drive the invaders from the skies. Another sort are busily engaged. The great numbers of fighter planes needed in this emergency posed new problems for the manufacturers of aircraft. Never before had there been the need which exists today for... There was no precedent to follow in the rapid mass production of airplanes. 
nor were there enough workers available with sufficient training to do this big job by the methods formerly used. New methods had to be developed so that the hands of unskilled workers could be put to the task of building the many thousands of planes so urgently needed. Men and women as well were recruited from all occupations with all sorts of backgrounds. Go here was working at a soda fountain three months ago. Today, he's building aircraft. Joe, you've probably wondered how it was possible for you and the thousands of men who work with you to become such an important part of the war effort in so short a time. How it was possible for George Stevens, a grocery clerk. Art Lowell, a butcher. And Steve and Archie to be building airplanes today. Well, in a word, it was due to simplification. Simplification of the complicated processes of building an airplane. Bell Aircraft engineers worked out a system in which the big job of construction was broken down into many smaller, less complicated jobs so that you and your fellow workers who hadn't time for extensive training could do the work. All these jobs were planned with very precise coordination so that the final result would be great numbers of perfect planes, all exactly alike. This system of coordination is known as lofting. In the lofting department, the plane is laid out on the floor in full size. Numbers like 213 and a half mark different stations of the plane. These stations are points of reference from which measurements can be made. From this layout, dimensions are taken off to make what is called the body plan. It's something like a topographical map, the kind that shows hills and valleys. The lines of this drawing are cut directly into the wood so that it is easier to make tracings. Everything to be known as to the size and shape of every part of the plane can be found on this drawing. From the tracing of the body plan, the engineer takes his measurements so that he can draw in detail each part of the plane. Here he is laying out rivet holes. From his drawing, a template is laid out on black metal. The exact shape of the part is drawn and the rivet holes are located and then drilled in exactly the right places. Then it is cut out. Instead of having to work from complicated blueprints in the shop, workers are guided by these templates. All the templates are the exact size of the finished part. To make an army air cobra, it takes more than 9,000 of them. Each is a pattern for an individual part of the plane. The loft templates are used as guides on a new type machine which Bell Aircraft engineers developed to speed the production of parts. It accommodates a number of different parts at once and works through several thicknesses of metal, cutting many parts quickly and uniformly. have to be formed with flanges and shaped for added strength. Here too, the skillful planning of the lofting department has been put to work. They control the making of the forms used in the drop hammers and presses. With the registration holes to guide the workers in the operation, each part, when finished, will fit perfectly in its place. Each plane requires thousands of different parts. Multiplied by the number of planes that must be built, it means that the drop hammers and the hydraulic presses and the men who operate them must keep turning out the parts in great quantities with all possible speed. All the parts must be painted to prevent corrosion. This job is done quickly and efficiently by means of a conveyor system. Things have to keep moving here.
When the parts are dried and sorted, they are distributed to the assembly points throughout the plant in a constantly moving supply line. The job of assembling an army air cobra is divided into sub-assemblies, and these are further divided into smaller bench assemblies. This is a section of the wing, the leading edge. The parts are first set in place and clamped together. It's like a child's mechano set. The vertical fin is assembled in the same way. Clamps are inserted in the holes which were drilled when the part was made, and they hold the assembly together until it is riveted. The entire plane is assembled in this manner, simply, quickly, first clamped and then riveted. With this simplified method of assembly, the mass production of airplanes was made possible. Thousands of men, each working independently, assemble small sections of the plane. And these in turn become part of larger sections, the sub-assemblies, which will take their places in Army Air Cobras later on the final production lines. The organization of this widespread assembly system and its success was made possible by the work done in the lofting department. There, each part, each operation was carefully planned so that all of the assemblies, large and small, will fit perfectly. No longer must these men have years of experience behind them to be able to build aircraft. For with this system, there's only one way these parts can go together, and that's the right way. And so you see, Joe, you and your fellow workers are now able to do important work in the winning of this war. Now that fuselage behind you is ready to go into the final production line. For more than 30 years, the aircraft industry has worked unceasingly to develop the best craft that engineering skill and ingenuity could conceive. And through their efforts, the airplane today has reached a high state of perfection. Heretofore, the orders for planes were small, and volume production did not exist. But with the emergency, the industry changed overnight from handmade methods to machines and assembly lines. In one year, quantity production never dreamed possible was attained. With other industries converting their facilities to the production of combat planes, it is to the experienced pioneers of the aircraft industry that they have turned for guidance so that they may reproduce parts, sub-assemblies, and even completed models. On a constantly advancing chain, the fuselage moves from station to station to be fitted with the many devices and sub-assemblies. At station number one, many small parts are installed in the plane. Among these are the oil coolers, which connect with the ducts and the wings, so that a constant flow of air will cool the engine oil. Further on, the control stick. Here is the real nerve center of the fighting plane, for in addition to operating the control services, it carries the trigger for the automatic firing of all machine guns and the cannon. The nose wheel of the landing gear will fit into this compartment. Hundreds of feet of tubing carrying gasoline, oil, and hydraulic fluids wind through the fuselage of the Army Air Cobra. The cabin, completely assembled, is attached to the rest of the fuselage at the next station on the production line. It is lowered into place and bolted securely. Because of the complete lofting, it fits accurately and the skin has only to be clamped into place for riveting. Inside the cabin, 
the installation of delicate instruments and other devices necessary to the control of the plane is completed. To protect the pilot from enemy gunfire, bulletproof armor glass is installed. Further down the line, the powerful liquid-cooled Allison engine is set in position behind the pilot's cabin. The engine bolts directly onto the main fuselage, saving the unnecessary weight of a separate engine mounting. With an extension drive shaft connecting to the engine, the power is transmitted by means of a gearbox to the propeller. For quick engine change or service, it is only necessary to unbolt the drive shaft and the engine can be hoisted straight out. The propeller need not be removed, as is the case in other airplanes. Like the cabin, the rear fuselage, completely assembled with pins, stabilizer, and control surfaces, joins the production line to be bolted in place. At station nine, a maze of wires and conduits. Enough to completely wire two medium-sized houses are installed for the many electrical controls and devices. The instruments for radio communication are contained here in compact units. These are the nose wheel assemblies. Operating with the other wheels of the tricycle landing gear, it greatly facilitates the ground handling of the plane. The armaments housed in the fuselage consist of two synchronized high caliber machine guns which fire between the propeller blades and a 37 millimeter automatic cannon which fires through the propeller hub. These guns occupy points of vantage directly forward of the pilot for most accurate firing. Steel armor plate as heavy as that used in any airplane protects vital parts of the plane. The delicate mechanism of the gearbox is protected and it also adds an extra measure of safety for the pilot. At station 11, the electrically controlled propeller is set in place. The last operation on the assembly line is the installation of the 37 millimeter cannon barrel, a weapon which brings increased firepower to these sky fighters. And so the fuselage is completed, and back on the production line, others move steadily forward. Each step brings them closer to their destination, the ranks of our country's air forces. Now the fighter is ready for its wings. Complete with fuel tanks, control services, landing gear, and additional machine guns, they slide into place and are secured. Each plane is thoroughly inspected in the operation of all of its parts before it is ready for its initial flight. Another Army Air Cobra is finished, and the work goes on. Day and night, seven days a week, the management and workers of the Bell Aircraft Corporation will continue to put forth their entire resources and energies in the cause of justice and democracy. Each day, each night, so long as the need shall exist, these fighter defenders will continue to come forth in ever-increasing numbers to join the mighty sky armadas of this nation, the British Empire, and all other nations allied in this war against aggression.
modern armies are not reckoned alone in terms of manpower. For the machine age has affected the conduct of warfare as it has every other phase of human endeavor. Armies today are composed of highly trained specialists, skilled in the use of the machines with which wars are now fought. Courage and the will to fight are now, as they have always been, the very foundations of victory. But today, superiority of weapons is an even greater determining factor. The Army Air Forces and the designers of the Air Cobra set out to achieve supremacy in airplane design. And in this plane, they did something that had never been done before in production. They put the powerful engine behind the pilot. This has a number of advantages. With the engine almost in the center of gravity, the maneuverability is greatly improved. And it also makes possible a greater degree of fuselage streamlining. But the greatest advantage is the powerful cannon installed directly in front of the pilot. Battlefields lifted to the sky, superior firepower and fighting planes will be an important factor in winning this war. The Army Air Cobra is the only single engine plane now in production in this country which mounts a 37 millimeter explosive shell firing cannon. With the engine behind him, the pilot is directly over the leading edge of the wing, where he has excellent vision in all directions. To be able to see the enemy at all times is his best protection. With the tremendous demands upon the stamina of the brave young men in fighter defense, every effort was made to lighten his task. Since the boundless heavens are his battlegrounds, his landing field might be almost anywhere. A tricycle landing gear enables him to land easily on rough ground in any kind of weather. Important, too, in the design of fighter planes is an arrangement which provides for rapid servicing of the necessary parts so that all the operations may be done simultaneously. The sections requiring frequent servicing have removable cowlings. All parts of the engine are easily reached and the engine itself can be quickly removed. The gasoline tanks can be rapidly refilled and all the guns easily reloaded and adjusted. As these fighters stand ready to go forth to defend this nation in the skies, other forces on land are ready to repulse the forces of invasion. While behind the lines in the factories, other armies of fighters are doing their important part. These men are needed to produce in ever increasing numbers the vital combat planes. 